Hey, -o. we just uploaded our video on the new Springfield Emissary Man. Uh, this is definitely a fun one to shoot, bro. Hell yeah, brother. Glad to see Springfield still making stuff in God's caliber. Not that sissy 9mm crap. Sissy 9mm, dude, what are you talking about, man? I'm, I'm looking for Springfield to jump into that double stack 9mm game, dude. Times are changing, man. And really, a beer, it's, it's like 9 in the morning. A double stack 9mm 1911 for Springfield Armor. You are dreaming there, brother. I don't think you understand what it takes for a company to machine a gun like that. And yeah, a brewski to start my day. There's nothing wrong with that, man. It's 5 o'clock somewhere. I don't know about that one, man. Uh, I've been shooting Springfield's 1911s for years, dude. I think a company of their size is more than capable of diving into this market. Hell, I bet you they could even do it for like a price point of 1500 bucks. 1500 bucks? Now, I know you flipped your wig there, brother. There's no way that's ever going to happen. Well, I think it can happen, man. I've been working with Springfield for the last few years, and they're really good about listening to their customer base. Uh, I bet you we start seeing something from them in this platform probably within the next year. I bet you it'll even be optics cut, too. Again, brother, you are dreaming. First of all, you don't need no fancy red dot to hit your target. Just be a man and line up them iron sights. Front sight focus, brother. Secondly, I will bet you a case of this shit beer here. You ain't ever going to see that gun from Springfield. All right, man, I'll take that bet. You just wait. I bet you Springfield the next year comes out with something awesome that's going to quiet all you negative Nancys. You just wait. <laughs> What's going on? If you're new here, my name is Roger. I own a company called QVO Tactical where we make holsters and gear and also film content for this channel. I am super excited for today's video, guys. I'm just gonna put this out there now. Uh, this will probably be my favorite video we have done all year. With it being September 1st, I'm sure you guys all know that this video is on the new Springfield Armory 1911 Double Stack Prodigy models. Uh, we've been waiting over a year to share this news with you guys, so I am super pumped that the day is finally here. We have a very entertaining and information-packed video for you guys all to check out. So without further ado, let's get started. I like to tell you guys how I go about getting these products in for review. Um, you all know we have a great working relationship with the Springfield Armory team. At the end of last year, I was contacted by their marketing team and informed of the new 1911 double stack project. Springfield let me know that they listened to their customer base and that they were working on bringing this gun to fruition. Flash forward to summer of this year and I received an email from the Springfield team informing me that the time has come. Springfield sent us both models of the Prodigy for this video and for future content. We can't say thank you enough for the Springfield team letting us be a part of this launch and supporting us with our content and our channel. In my opinion, this is a huge deal, especially for those who have been wanting to get into the double stack 1911-2011 game. Um, we're gonna explain that further in this video. Okay, so before we get into the range footage though, let's go over the specs of these new offerings from Springfield. The new Springfield Armory 1911DS Prodigy is Springfield's take on the very popular double stack 1911 platform. Their proven 1911 platform has been reconfigured around a double stack magazine with their polymer grip module mounting directly to the forged steel frame. The new Prodigy will be offered in a commander four and a quarter length as well as a five inch government length. Each model utilizes their new polymer grip module with their adaptive grip texturing, which was very well received on the Hellcat and Hellcat Pro. 
The grip feels very good in the hands and is still slim enough to be comfortable while providing magazine capacities of 17, 20, or 26 rounds of 9mm ammunition. Speaking of magazines, these guns will come with 117 round and 120 round Duramag branded magazine. There's also an optional 26 rounder. Now when it comes to mounting your optics, Springfield has partnered with Agency Arms utilizing their Agency Optic System or AOS. Springfield will be offering plates for a wide variety of optics to include their hex lineup, the Trijicon RMR footprint, the Delta Point Pro footprint, Aimpoint Acro, and the Holosun 509T. The plates will be made from 17.4 stainless steel, specifically designed for the Springfield Prodigy models. The Prodigy is built on a forged steel slide and frame for maximum strength. The Prodigy will be offered in either a 4.25 inch or 5 inch stainless steel bull barrel with an 11 degree crown. It will also feature ambidextrous safeties, forward slide serrations, a black Cerakote finish, and a full Picatinny dust cover so you can mount weapon lights like the Surefire X300s. Now here is the awesome kicker guys. These guns have an MSRP of $1,499. That is a lot of gun at this price point. When Springfield first told me about these guns, I was expecting a price point of around $1,899. For those of you familiar with the 2011 world, you know the entry level cost to play ball is about $2,500. I will also just say this now. I have already ordered four more of these to purchase. Okay guys, so as you can see, a lot of thought has gone into designing these new quality guns. Um, right out of the box, these guns felt very smooth when you cycled the action. I picked these up a couple weeks ago when they arrived at Ventura Munitions, and both Mikey and I were very pleased when we got to first handle them. Oh man, that feels good. All right, now what you guys all came here to see, the range footage. For this range day, we had a special guest all the way out from Memphis, Tennessee. Um, our good buddy Stephen Pham flew out here to help us film this range video. We really appreciate him taking the time to come all the way out here to Vegas to help us out with the video. In two days, we spent about 18 hours out on the range and we put a little over 1,500 rounds through these guns collectively. As we always do, we filmed our first rounds through the guns in order to get our first impressions on camera. So here's that footage now. All right, guys, the day is finally here. Uh, this has been like a year in the making. I've been waiting for this thing to come out and show it to you guys. Um, we have it. It is the Springfield 1911 DS Prodigy. We got the four and a quarter inch model here. We're we'll breaking out the five inch as well. Um, we got it equipped out on the range with a Surefire X300 Ultra and their Hex Dragonfly Optic. Um, rocking some 124s. We have not zeroed the gun. However, the optic that came with it looks like it's slaved pretty well to the iron. So we'll shoot a grouping here, get our first thoughts on the gun, um, and then we'll get it zeroed and get to the range stuff. But but yeah, I am super pumped. Um, this is a huge deal, especially for all of you guys that want to get into the uh, 2011, 1911 double stack world. Anyway, without further ado, first rounds, here we go. Alright, so it feels good right away. A um, couple things to note, it is, it's definitely heavier than the other 2011s I'm used to, which I like. Um, yeah, it points really well, natural point of aim like always. Uh, it does have, like I'm used to shooting all the ported guns and stuff, so a little bit of, I haven't shot a pretty much stock double stack 1911 in a minute. But uh, the bull barrel, the crowning, everything that we talked about earlier in the spec section is just awesome. Let's go take a look at this grouping. Got two little flyers here. I can feel myself anticipating and dipping down, but I mean, that's a pretty good zero on the dot. I'll take that for, uh, I think I shot 20 rounds. So, uh, but initial thoughts, flat, soft shooting. Um, I definitely want to run on the range more, getting used to their, their Dragonfly dot. Not sure if I'm a big fan of it, but uh, other than that, this thing is definitely, um, like we talk about the price point and stuff, guys. Like you guys are all, I'm, I'm pumped, guys. Anyway, let's get uh, Fam and John shooting this thing and see what they think. All right, we got fam up. He flew all the way in from Memphis to help me with this video. I appreciate it, brother man. So first round through the new Springfield Prodigy 1911 DS, 4.25 inch model. Go for it, bud. All right. 15 rounds through it, what do you think? Uh the trigger's a little heavier than I guess what I'm used to now sure. shooting it, but overall it shoots really, really well. Like I think all of them are. You wanna on go the look black. at it? Let's go look yeah. at it. All of them are on the black. I'm holding a little high. Yeah, I mean it's pretty yeah, good. I mean, like it shoots well. I like it a lot. Yeah, I dig it. Like this thing's gonna be sick. I think a lot of people are gonna be like you were saying, a lot of dudes that are super into like the 2011s, but not 
in that market yet, I think they're going to crush it with this. All right, we got John up now. First round through the Springfield 1911 DS product. You go for it, bud. Very nice. I like it. It's got a good solid feel to it. I like that weight compared to what you're used to. Yeah, I like it because it, 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 it make, keeps it more stable. Cool. Yeah. Let's see what we hit. Okay. Check out the hits. Is that me all below there? Yeah. What were you holding at? I'm trying to center, but you know me pushing with my finger. We'll get this bad boy zeroed up now and get to it. Yeah. All right, guys, so before we get to all the range time fun, I figured let's get the first impressions of the five inch 1911 DS Prodigy from Springfield. Um, that way we can just get to shooting and running them both. Um, this is their five inch model. Only difference I believe is going to be that it's five inches length instead of four and a quarter. So the government length versus commander length. Uh, again, Surefire X300 and the Hex Dragonfly running some 124s. These are gonna be the first rounds through it. Uh, for this target though, we'll shoot the uh, top left bullseye so we can take a look at those hits and see how we're doing. All right, here we go. Five inch, double stacked, 1911, nine mil, with a crazy bull barrel. Dude, I'm stoked. All right, let's go look at this. This was the bullseye. When I was getting my hits on before I started speeding up, uh, definitely was very close to point of aim, point of impact. Um, I will say this right now, five inch to me is feeling a little bit better. Obviously it should with more weight in the front uh, than the four and a quarter in regards to mitigating recoil. But again, you don't have that concealability factor with being uh, three quarters of an inch longer. So I'm gonna have uh, Fam and John shoot this as well and get their thoughts. All right, we got Fam up now. He's gonna get his first rounds through the five inch model. Go for it, bud. All right. Yeah, this one's a lot better. <laughs> this is so fun. <laughs> yeah, this five inch is sick. Uh, yeah, let's go look at the group. There you go. That's me. But other than that, yeah, the gunshot, great. Super flat, super feeling. It just feels good. I've been waiting to shoot this thing for so long. Like I definitely feel like when I get my first rounds up, like I'm like I'm jittery because I'm excited. Yeah. I'm like, ah, and I throw, I was like, oh man. But dude, yeah. So definitely a noticeable difference between the five inch and the four and a quarter. Yeah. Yeah, this thing's sweet. All right, we got John up now. He's gonna get his first rounds to the five inch 1911 DS Prodigy. Go for it, bud. Five inch model, what do you think? I like it. Definitely stays a lot flatter with that extra length out there. Get you right back on the target quick. All right, let's go take a look at hits. For the most part, still in the same uh, yeah. six inch circle, but you know, dropping low and left, which is uh, the, how do I say it? The uh, typical error for right-handed shooters, but not too bad, man. Next up, guys, I quickly got these guns zeroed at 10 yards with the included Hex Dragonfly optic, and then you know what drill we had to start with. All right, guys, now that we are zeroed and squared away, of course, we have to do our favorite drill, the build drill. Uh, I will be rocking the five inch model, so seven yards out on paper for you today. We're gonna check these hits after, keep ourselves honest, but uh, here we go, first build drill with the uh, five inch Springfield 1911 DS Prodigy. Stand by. Six shots, 246, a little uh, gap there in my grip, but 135, first shot. We got splits of 135, 22, or sorry, 22, 28, 22, 20, 19. And check hits now. Oh man, these hits, I'll take them. So we got one, two, three, four, five, six, 
all in the A zone. So 246, we definitely want to get sub two. So I can tell from the first build drill, um, I like the weight, but it's definitely getting a little bit used to. That's where probably like quarter of a second to half a second of my draw stroke is getting slowed or slower, getting slower. Let's go again. <sighs> 221. So we cut off uh, about two tenths of a second. Going to build up. Looks like all alpha one Charlie up here. All right, let's go again. There it is, we got a 190, first shot 114. Splits for this time though, 14, uh, actually 17, 16, 15, 14, 14. Definitely had a couple season flyers though, so let's see. We got another one through here. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. So, what, did it reset on me? What was it? 190, so sub two, but I only got one alpha, close one. Let's go again. Nope. All right, we got Fam up now. He's gonna do some build drills on paper with the 4.25 inch commander length. Go for it, bud. All right, stand by. That was in a 2.38. 2.38, let's go look at hits. This is the first time shooting that I kind of wanted to be like, all right, let's get maximum hit accountability kind of thing. Looks like you did. Looks like they're all alpha. Yeah. One, two, three, two, three, four, five. Where are you at, six boy? Probably in that big old hole. We're in this cluster, yeah. Oh, no, it's right here. Right. Yeah, I see it. Cool. Cool. All right, speed it up. All six alphas, and what was the time again? 2.38, you want me to go through my split? No, nope, you're good. All right. That was in a 2.15, first shot 1.17. 2.15. Oh, it felt good. It looks good. One, two, three, four, Left, Charlie. Five. Right in front of you, Alpha, black zone, last ring. All right. Six. Yeah, so five Alpha, one Charlie, and a 2.15, first shot 1.17. Nice. Nice. I'm stoked for like shooting this brand new platform. I will say trigger fills a little heavier than what we're used to mm -hmm. um, and the reset, but at the same time, we're talking $1,000 less. Yeah. So, cool. Cool. So with our first few build drills on paper, I definitely got a better feel for this trigger. Um, I will say this right now, if you are somebody coming from the striker fire platform and you pick one of these up and shoot it, you'll most likely find that the trigger is much easier to use than what you are used to. Uh, before filming this video, I talked to a buddy who also received one of these and it was actually his first 1911. Uh, to him coming from Glocks, it was a night and day difference and this new Prodigy just felt right in his hands. Now the other side of that coin is this. Um, if you are somebody like me or Fam who has been shooting 1911 style guns for a long time, you're going to find this trigger to be a little on the heavier side. As we continue to shoot more build drills, I'll better explain. All right guys, I figured now let's do some build drills on some C-Zone steel, uh, just to kind of boost our ego a little bit. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna do two different angles, uh, one from the glasses, one from the camera here so you can see what's going on. All right, here we go. Recording on there, stand by. Again, just learning that new reset, but 183, first shot, 9-4. Got 18, 15, 24, 17, 15. And yeah, I mean, obviously there, you can see here all six hits, so we're good there. Let's go again. Pop, 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 pop. And a 183 clean. 15, let's see, split 17, 23, 16, 31, 15, 15. It's crazy. There we go. That's what I'm talking about, a 156. First shot was an 8-4. Uh, 16, 14, 14, 15, 13. Oh, two threes on the fourth shot. That was a 2.0, first shot 1.01. Nice. All right, 
Alright, that was in a 1.83. Draw the first shot was 1.0, even. Nice. That one, that was a 2.06. Draw the first shot, 1.16. Nice. Nice. Draw the first shot, 1.04, 1.88 total time. 188 clean? Yeah, 188. Nice. Good stuff, man. Nice. So for those of you familiar with the channel, you know we like to shoot build drills here. And contrary to popular belief, we don't just shoot them for cool Instagram clips. Uh, for me, build drills get me very familiar with the trigger quickly, um, they let me get a feel for how the gun recoils, and they're also just a lot of fun. By doing so many of these build drills, I was able to see that the trigger is definitely heavier than what I'm used to, and the reset feels just a little bit longer. I'm normally shooting build drills between 1.5 seconds and 1.7 seconds. Um, I was able to get a 1.56 clean, however, that was not consistent. Um, I was more in the 1.8 and 1.9 range uh, when shooting these guns. Now, while we were out on the range, I wanted to take a minute to hop into the shade and talk to you guys about the different holster options for these new Springfield Prodigies. All right, guys, we figured we would take a break from the hot desert sun uh, and hop underneath the tent and go over some holster questions. Um, I know I'm gonna get a bunch of them down below in the comment section, so I figured let's just do it while we're out here on the range. Anyway, when you get one of these uh, Springfield 1911 DS Prodigy models, you'll either get the commander length, which is 4.25 inches, or you're gonna get the government length, which is a five inch model. Uh, with that being said, we'll go over first our holsters made by our company, QVO Tactical. Um, the ones that we're using here on the range are the QVO secondary on the waistband holsters. They uh, have multiple points of adjustable retention. They are set up uh, to accept the Safari Line QLS platform. That's how we've been able to click them in and out of our uh, battle belts. Um, as you can see here, clear guns. Everything's unloaded, made safe. So with this holster, you have the three points of adjustable retention. This is a holster that is made for, if you go into our website, it's under the 2011 section. Um, at the time of this video, we will be adding an entire Springfield section for these models. So anyway, with that being said, here is a holster for a 2011 with an X300, as you can hear clicks right into place. Um, you're gonna be able to adjust it as tight or as loose as you want it based on these three screws here and you'll be good to go. Uh, nice positive click that we all know and love. Here is the 4.25 inch, the commander length. Again, all clear. And here is the other um, OWB secondary. Again, for next 300, good to go. Isn't gonna go anywhere. Um, now, when it comes to duty holsters, guys, you're gonna have, in my opinion, the two most popular models are gonna be obviously Safari Land ALS platform, but also the Black Hawk T-Series platform um, with the recent release, or the recent popularity of the 2011 platform. Uh, another company's come forward with an awesome duty holster, in my opinion. Anyway, a couple things to note about that. If you get the Safari Land ALS, the only length, the longest length that they make this uh, holster for that'll fit this gun is the Staccato P 4.4 inch. So the only uh, spring fill you're gonna be able to fit in here is the commander length, which is 4.25 because it's under the 4.4. As you can see, boom, clicks in, hood's gonna go over, isn't gonna go anywhere. Even with the hood up, it still isn't gonna fall out. You have your ALS uh, retention lever. If you're not familiar with these holsters, we did a whole video on that as well, so definitely check out that. Um, but you'll hit your ALS lever and comes out, no problems whatsoever, and goes right back in. Again, isn't gonna go anywhere. Boom, out, back in. Um, secondly, you can't run, like I just said, you're not gonna be able to run the five inch holster in here because this holster will only accept up to 4.4 inches unless you get it modified. Our buddy uh, Jeff over at RDR Gear, he does, he's a, a wizard with all the Safari Land stuff, making them fit different platforms. You can hit him up. Um, okay, moving on here again, the five inch. Prodigy model in the Black Hawk T series. Now, something to note about this holster: um, this is based upon the X300, so you have to have an X300 or an X400 from Surefire in order for this to work with your uh, 2011 or 1911 double stack pistols. I'll show you right here as we go in. Boom! Clicks in. Hood's going to come down. Lever's going to come up. This level three, and it's not going anywhere. You hit your levers, and it all comes out nice and easy. Even with the hood down, you have the second level of retention until you hit this lever to come out. Again, check out the video that we linked um, specifically on these two holsters. Now, this holster will also work with the shorter length, again, because it is based on the X300 platform. Boom, in, locked, even with the hood gone, locked, isn't going anywhere. So you wouldn't, again, you're not gonna be able to run the five inch model in the shorter ALS holster, but in the ALS holster, you'll be able to run a different variety of lights. So if you're not running the X300, you're running a TLR1, TLR9, uh, something else like that, it will fit in here um, and you'll be good to go with that. So if we have any questions uh, other than what I've just shown here, definitely let us know down below in the comment section. But we have found that with our holsters, um, right now, if you're a customer of ours, has one of our 2011 holsters, you'll be able to rock these new Springfield Prodigy models because of the adjustment.
possible retention points, you can tighten it up. Um, we found we just had to do a little bit of tightening and it worked no problems. This is actually the holster I used in my Staccato XL video and we just tightened it down and it's working just fine as well as this is the holster we used in the Terran Tactical Sand Viper video. And again, we just tightened it down and it worked no problem with these new uh, Springfield Prodigy models. Again, any other questions, let us know down below and now we're gonna get back out on the range. Now it's one thing to talk about holsters guys, but it's a whole nother thing to hop on the range and demonstrate with them. One twenty. One twenty seven. One thirty. I'll take that. Right in the mouth. One fifty. Stand by. And the forehead. 138, stand by. Nice. Left eyeball, 139, stand by. One forty. Last one, here we go, stand by. Nice, right eyeball. 136, your fastest time and your cleanest shot. Good stuff, man. Thanks. Level three holster, hey -o. Now to finish off our holster segment, I brought two of our holsters to the range. Um, these are designed for concealment and we make them right here at QVO Tactical. Um, I brought these out so that we could do some concealment work while carrying both inside and outside the waistband. If you are interested in any of these holsters that we offer for this platform, you can find them on our website, qvotactical.com as of today, under the Springfield Armory section. The models shown here in this video were our secondary OWB holster, our standard OWB holster, and our wingman appendix rig, which is worn inside the waistband. Next up, let's talk about ammunition. Um, as we always do, I brought several different grains of 9mm ammunition with us to the range. We first want to ensure that the different grains function properly through the guns, but in addition to that, we like to see how they all recoil. We even brought out some cool new stuff from our friends over at Ultima Ammunition. All right, guys, I figured while we're out here, a little special treat for you guys. Uh, our buddies over at Ultima Ammunition just came out with this awesome new round. You know we love carrying their 90 grain plus P ammunition as our carry ammo, but they now have this cool new 68 grain. Uh, this stuff is getting 1,880 feet per second uh, in regards to velocity out of handguns. So I got a mag loader up here with 15 rounds. We're each gonna fire five just to kind of get our initial impressions with it. I've never shot this stuff before. Uh, in addition to that, in a few minutes here, we're gonna do our slow motion footage like we, uh, like we normally do. However, we're gonna have have uh, like six different grains of ammunition. And on top of that, I brought a chronograph out today. So we're gonna chronograph a bunch of different ammo on this video as well. But without further ado, I'm gonna try uh, first five rounds out of this thing and then have everybody else try it. Here we go. Here we go. Get my initial thoughts, just five rounds, and then we'll do some close-ups with slow-mo after. Here we go, five rounds. Woo! Dude, that is not anywhere near. Uh, you guys think plus P ammunition, lighter loads with like just, you know, fast velocity numbers, you're gonna think like super snappy, but let's walk over here, fam. I just shot this group right here with those five rounds. One, two, three, four, five. Uh, definitely not snappy at all. Um, it's crazy. I was expecting it to be much more punchy, but it is super smooth. Feels like, uh, feels like I'm shooting like a 124 bullet. But uh, anyway, I'm gonna have uh, Fam and John try it and see what they think. All right, we got Fam up now. He's gonna try some of that 68 grain from Ultimate Ammunition. Go ahead, bud. Okay, 
This is really light, dude. <laughs> it doesn't feel like. Doesn't feel like traditional plus P, right? Yeah. Like it, it's, like it's not even ported. No, that's sick. Super Let's go take you shot at the bottom box, yeah? yeah? Bottom rectangle, five shots. Nice. So you got three touching. Go ahead and point at the three. So you got one, two, and then three. One, two, three, four, five. Nice. All right, let's have John try it out. All right, we got John up now. He's gonna try out some of that 68 grain. Go for it, bud. Five inch spring filled 1911 DS. Nice. Very flat, very flat. Like it. You were shooting the bottom B here. Here we go. So you got four of them in the circle and then one little flyer down there. Nice. All right, first four rounds, some 115s. Next four are some 124s. Next four are some 147s. Next four are some 165s. Next four are the 90 grain plus P's. And the last four are the 68 grain plus P's. All right, first four rounds are 115s. Next four are some 124s. Next four are some 165s. Next four are 90 grain plus peas. And the last four are the 68 grain plus peas. Now something we normally don't do is bring out our chronograph. Um, however, with this launch being such a big deal for us, I wanted to bring it out and see what kind of velocities we were getting with these new guns. All right guys, something we're gonna do a little different. Uh, we actually brought a chronograph. If you guys see it here, it's the Pro Chrono DLX. Uh, I have it connected via Bluetooth to my cell phone, so I'll be able to uh, picture in picture the velocity times. You also hear it, it talks to us, it's kind of cool. But we're going to shoot some 124s uh, and then uh, jump up to the 90 grain plus P's and the 68 grain plus P's. Um, we just got this new ammo, we wanna try it out. But we're gonna chronograph it uh, two times for you guys, uh, five rounds each. Uh, the first time we'll do it through the five inch Prodigy 1911DS, and then the second one we'll do the uh, four and a quarter inch. So. Without further ado, let's check this stuff out. All right, first five rounds are gonna be some 124s out of the uh, five inch Prodigy. And uh, here we go. 1,154. 1,178. 1,155. 1,170. 1,175. So we got some pretty consistent times, 1175, 1170, 1155, 1178, and 1154. Uh, now we're gonna switch it up to the 90 grain and see what we get. All right guys, now we got some of the uh, 95 grain plus piece from Ultimate Ammunition, and we'll do five rounds of this out of the five inch Prodigy. Here we go. 1,531. 1,521. 1,571 1,539 1,538 
So we got 1538, 1539, 1571, 1521, 1531. Pretty consistent as well, but what, 400 more? feet per second so definitely a, a huge oomph there and it's crazy because you're getting 400 feet per second more velocity wise but you don't feel that like snappiness that you would get from a plus p uh, in addition to that uh, i think it's definitely be, like helping with the uh, the more weight in the uh, new springfield prodigies plus having that five inch but uh, now we're going to try the uh, 68 grains and see what those feel like all right, next up guys, like I said, the 68 grain uh, plus peas from uh, Ultimate Ammunition. This is some new stuff that they're uh, just came out with and letting us try out, but it is stated to get up to uh, 1,880 feet per second. I'm not sure through what gun they were testing with, but we have it in this uh, five inch Prodigy and we'll see what we get. Here we go, first rounds. 1,824. 1,824. 1,844. 1,829, 1,844. Oh, I think I shot the uh, next one too soon. But still, we're talking 1844, 1829, 1844, and 1824. That's pretty dang awesome. So now we've gone from uh, 11 something to 18 something. So you're talking a, a, a boost of 700 feet per second. However, uh, I'm barely feeling uh, more recoil. So, you know, everybody's asking about, hey, are, like, are the plus P rounds that you're carrying, do you really like find them beneficial? Well, yeah, I'd love to have 700 uh, more feet per second with not with with negligible recoil. Um, I'll take that over the 124. So, uh, just just my thoughts on it, guys. But now we'll try it out with the uh, four and a quarter inch the Commander Length Prodigy and uh, see what kind of results we get with that. All right, guys. Now we got the. Uh, Commander length, so the four and a quarter inch with some 124s, and we'll see what kind of numbers we're getting out of this. Here we go. 1,139. 1,149. 1,162. 1,114. 1,125. All right, so we got 1125, 1114, 1162, 1149, 1139. So um, let's mid to high, actually low to high, or low to mid 1100s. But now let's jump up to the uh, 90 grain with the four and a quarter. All right, guys, it's starting to get a little windy. We're gonna try to get through all this. Uh, we got the four and quarter inch Prodigy up now with some 90 grain plus P's. See what kind of velocities we're getting. Here we go. 1,523. 1,531, 1,516, 1,532, 1,543. So we went from uh, low to mid 1100s now to low to mid 1500s. So pretty consistent between the five inch and the four and a quarter. We went up 400 more feet per second, switching to the 90 grain. Now let's do some of the 68 grain. All right, guys, we're gonna finish up here with the uh, 68 grain plus P and the Prodigy four and a quarter inch. Let's see what kind of uh, velocities we're getting. Here we go. 1,791. 1,804. 1,828. 1,809. 1,816. So we went all the way up to uh, 1828 from the 1100s with the 124s. Um, again, very little difference in recoil between the 124s and the 18, or uh, sorry, the 124s and the 68 grains. But now you're getting 700 plus more uh, feet per second. So uh, I would definitely uh, think about checking these out. Again, we got a lot more footage coming from the Ultimate Ammunition stuff, but we are liking it. Thanks, guys. So when I first saw the photos of these guns, I thought that there were magwells included on these polymer grips. Um, when I received them, I discovered that that was not the case. I still practice reload drills because that's what we always do, and with proper indexing, I was able to reload smoothly. Um, I do hope though in the near future that Springfield or a third party company develops magwells for this platform.
was at this point that a gnarly storm started making its way towards us. Um, as you can see here, we actually had to take down our shade cover because we almost lost it in the wind. So we packed up our stuff and called it for the day. Um, it was at this point that we had about 1,200 rounds through the guns, but we still wanted to shoot some more while Fam was in town visiting. So the next day, Fam and I woke up early and we headed back out to the range. Now you guys know one range day is definitely not going to be enough with these new Springfield Prodigies. So Fam and I came back out today. We just finished up uh, filming a different review, but we did bring these guns out with us because we wanted to get some more range time with them. Anyway, I want to see if we can get some better build drills after a good night's rest. So seven yards out, C-Zone steel, and let's see what we do for time. Stand by. Nice draw, clean rip. So we got a 215. Um, I will say this, guys, and I'll talk about it in the studio. Definitely having a tougher time getting sub uh, two second build drills. Um, it's definitely a heavier trigger than what I'm used to, and it's definitely a longer reset. Um, things I would like to see improve for sure, but again, guys, when we talk about price point, um, yeah. I'm gonna be picking up a couple more of these. But anyway, we are looking at splits of 19, 17, 15, 17. So my draw is a 130 though. If I get a little faster with that, we probably get it under sub uh, two. So let's go again. So 197 clean, first shot was a 99, 18, 15, but then I got a 31 split. So. Got a sub two second clean, but again, guys, uh, it's just that the hard trigger and the reset. Uh, I'm getting used to the trigger now, the, the more weight, but the reset, I extend out to where I'm used to. I mean, I got tens of thousands of rounds through other 2011 platforms. And then, uh, so I'm extending to where I think it is, but then I'm pressing and there's no trigger because I haven't reset it yet. So it's gonna take more than, uh, I think we're about 1200 rounds into this gun at this point, but I'll probably have to get a couple more thousand rounds in it to get uh, super familiar with it. Anyway, let's go again. One ninety nine clean, but again, just have that little breaking cadence. So I'm gonna have Fam get up here and try now. All right, Fam is up now doing some build drills on some C zone steel. Go for it, bud. All right, stand by. A little bit of trigger freeze there. That was a two point two five first shot, one point one eight. Run again. Stand by. Nice. I was in a 2.09 first shot, 1.24. 209 clean, that's good, man. I'll do one more. Stand by. Woo! All right, that was in a 1.89, 1.07. Nice. So looks like you got more rest than I did. Probably, man. Good, good night's sleep goes a long way. So of course we ran some more build drills and while I still had a little bit of difficulty finding a smooth cadence, I was still able to score sub two second build drills. Um, I think with a little more time on the range with these, maybe some finger muscle exercises or with a thousand dollars that I just saved, I could easily change out the trigger and I'm gonna be rocking this thing just as fast as my other 1911s and 2011s. Now to finish up this range session, Fam and I both decided to run the Bear Solution Standards Drill. All right, guys, I figured we would finish up this range day with one of our favorite drills, the Bear Solution Standards Drill from our buddy Drew Estel. Uh, I'm gonna run the five inch 1911 DS Prodigy and let's see what we get for times. Here we go. Got the glasses running, stand by. Definitely did not pass. I got a 7.99, so a really good time, but I could feel I jerked right and left when I pulled those last two. So one, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five. It's got one in this circle, but this is way Mike. This is way Mike. So definitely should have, uh, I, I like to slow down and get my hits, especially on a three inch target. So I should have, and then got those hits, but Really good, fun drill, guys. You can print one out off of his website. Um, I definitely recommend it, bring it out with you. But I'm gonna get Fam up here trying this and then we'll get back in the studio. All right, Fam, last drill of the day. Bear Solution Standards, bud, ready? Yep. On you. All right, stand by. Okay, I can count. You only shot nine, huh? Yeah, only nine. All right, let's go check the hits. What was the time? 9.26. 9.26. 12 shots. I dropped both the center ones a little. Yeah, but they're at least they're together. <laughs> One, two, three, four, five, two center ones, and then, oh no, that should be three. And then one, two, three, four. So one short and four out. 
All right, so we're literally gonna hop, we're, we're both going to the airport right now. I'm headed to Dallas, you're headed to Memphis. But with that being said, cause you're not gonna be in the studio to talk about this, kind of a uh, one to three minute, what do you, what's your spill? What's your, what's your take on the new Springfield uh, 1911 DS Prodigy models? I think out of the box and everything that it has with it, it feels and is great, especially for that price point of, you said 14.99? Yeah. Yeah, like red dot optic cut, um, full barrel. The grip feels amazing. Like it really does feel amazing. And I like the extra weight. Like it's definitely, yes. it's, it's it's definitely heavier than my other 2011s, which I which I, I dig. Yeah. yeah, out of the box, I think it's it's great. And it's I'm interested to see what people are gonna do with it in the long run, because it, with that price difference of other stuff, you're gonna be able to customize it a lot. Yeah, I mean, you're talking, normally it's around $2,500, $2,600 to get yourself just a, a stock 2011. So that's optic cut and ready to go. But I mean, that's a thousand bucks that you gotta play with now that you have to play with to get lights, optics, machining, trigger. You know, I think I think one of these with like that red dirt trigger that everybody puts in their guns is gonna be pretty su pretty sweet. So you gonna you gonna pick one up? Yeah, man, I'm looking at that five inch a lot. So <laughs> I'm I'm interested to see what it what, what I can do with it. Cool, man. Well, I appreciate you flying out, dog. Anytime, brother. Appreciate you having me. Always such a good drill to start or end your range day from Drew Estel over at Bear Solutions. All right, guys, so now that the range portion is over, we have a lot to talk about. Um, I first wanna start with my overall thoughts, and then we will break down some things I noticed on the range, uh, some of the things that I think are important to point out, and I will try to address some of the questions I think you guys might have. So my overall thoughts on the new Springfield 1911 DS Prodigy is that this is going to be the gateway drug for new shooters coming into the double stack 1911 and 2011 arena. Um, I think it's the first time that we are seeing a very feature rich double stack 1911 with a very desirable price point. I think these guns shoot great right out of the box. However, you all know, um, I do not like to leave anything stock. Uh, with these being a thousand dollars less than what I'm used to paying, there's a lot of room for customization. Um, I could purchase one of these for $1,500 and then add a quality weapon light, a quality optic, and some type of porting package like maybe the Genghis Comp from Monsoon Tactical, hint hint, and still be less than the price of other popular 1911 and 2011s that cost more in their stock configuration. Now some things I am really liking about these new offerings from Springfield, other than the awesome price, uh, I am really digging the aesthetic of the gun. The front and rear serrations are both matching and functional. The Picatinny dust cover with the cutback at the end is a really clean look in my opinion. Um, if you are a 2011 shooter already, one of the first things you're going to notice when you pick one of these up is the weight difference. In this footage here, I have one of my Staccato C2s with a full size grip, an optic, and a Surefire X300. As you can see here, it weighs two pounds, 1.7 ounces unloaded. I then put the Springfield Armory Prodigy Commander Length model on the same scale with a similar configuration and it weighed five ounces more. I am someone who prefers the additional weight, especially towards the muzzle end of the gun as it greatly helps mitigate recoil. I also like that Springfield went with the Agency Arms optic plate system. Um, I'm glad they're working with Agency to develop their optic plate specifically for this gun. Springfield will be offering plates for the RMR footprint, Holosun 509T, the Aimpoint Acro, and the Delta Point Pro, uh, which includes the new EOTech eFlex, as they share the same footprint. Um, lastly are the magazines. It appears that Springfield has collaborated with Duramag to produce these magazines. I'm very happy to report that the magazines are cross compatible with other popular manufacturers like Staccato. While out on the range, we ran several Staccato mags through these Prodigy models with no issues whatsoever. Additionally, we use the Duramag Springfield mags in our Staccatos, which also work just fine. All right guys, out here, I have the Springfield Prodigy four and a quarter inch with the included Springfield Duramag. Shoot some rounds out of this for you guys, here we go. Okay, I'm a tack mag now to a, a staccato uh, 20 rounder and show you guys it's gonna cycle and give his lock back. Here we go. Boom. Works, no problems. And now we'll switch it up and show the reverse. All right guys, now with the Staccato C2, threaded barrel, full size grip, and a 20 round staccato mag, we'll finish this guy off and then mag change. Now we have the Duramag Spring Filled uh, 1911 DS mag. And we should get lock back on empty. There you go. Empty mag, lock back, and yeah, they are interchangeable and they work together. Hey -o. Another thing I want to mention is the third party aftermarket opportunities that will come with this new offering. When I first started learning that Springfield was going to produce this firearm at a very reasonable price, I immediately thought of the several companies that we already work with. Monsoon Tactical, Vocal Machine Works, and Extreme Shooters Grips, just to name a few. My personal opinion is that this gun will be the hardest gun to find in stores for the next two years. I think they're gonna be sold out repeatedly everywhere. Um, everyone out there that has been wanting to jump into the double stack 1911 game will now have the opportunity with the new Springfield Armory Prodigy lineup. 
I think that in the gun community, we're about to see a lot of new 1911 shooters. These new shooters are gonna want holsters, they're gonna want optics, grip work, Cerakote, and porting packages. Lots of good things for a lot of good people. Now, as I always do, I wanna talk about some of the things that I would like to see improve. Uh, I am definitely not a fan of the trigger, guys. Like I said before, it is only because I am so used to the lighter triggers that I've been using for the last several years. Uh, and again, with more reps, I will get a faster cadence. I was already able to prove to myself that I could get my build drills in the 1.5 area in its current configuration. The next thing is going to be the hex optics. Um, I like the housing for these optics as they seem very robust and durable. However, my hex wasp continually died as it just ate up batteries and the new dragonfly that was included with these Prodigy models, I found that the dot was very hard to see in the bright daylight sun. Um, even at the brightest setting, I still found myself having difficulty picking up the dot. Next up, let's talk about malfunctions. Uh, Fam and I spent two days on the range and we shot a little over 1500 rounds through both guns collectively. Uh, we did experience some failure to feeds, however, it was only with the five inch model. We noticed that it was primarily with the included Springfield magazines. We also noticed that we were able to replicate this malfunction when we performed TAC reloads. It appeared that this particular gun would push the next round forward out of the magazine when inserted into the magwell, which would cause a malfunction. This happened about 10 times while out on the range. Unfortunately, since the Prodigy is able to use staccato mags, I tried those out and didn't experience any further issues. I did let Springfield know about this issue and they're going to take a look at this specific gun. Uh, the 4.25 inch model, the commander length one that we had, that thing performed flawlessly and we had no issues whatsoever. We ran both staccato and Springfield mags with no issues at all in that model as well. I have heard of break-in periods with the 1911, so I thought that because it was happening intermittently, that maybe that was just the issue. Um, regardless, Springfield still wants to take a look at it, so that gun will be going back to them. All right, guys, before we end this video, I do want to go over a couple of things that I know I'm going to get questions about down below in the comment section. The first thing is going to be about the bench rest that I used to zero. I have been getting a ton of questions about that, so definitely check out the previous YouTube short that we did earlier this week, and I will also provide an Amazon link down below. The next question I know is going to be about how does this gun compare to the staccatos that I have. My favorite handgun to this day is still my Staccato XC with a metal Chili grip, and that still stands, guys. Um, at the same time, in the configuration that I have my Staccato XC in, it's gonna cost you about $5,000. My advice in regards to purchasing this new Springfield Prodigy uh, 1911 DS is gonna be one of two things. If you're new to the double stack 1911 game, then I definitely recommend picking one of these up because you are getting way more for your money. Secondly, if you are like me and you are already very familiar with the 2011 world, I still recommend picking one of these up because it's a great shooter right out of the box. However, it is also a blank canvas that you can do so much with and still be well under the price of other guns in this category. Next question I want to answer is about getting these models ported. If you're watching this video, then that means we have already sent out one of these guns to our buddy Vinny over at Monsoon Tactical. That way we can get a Genghis Comp version of the new Springfield Prodigy on the channel. In addition to that, we also have plans to get the Ignis version done with the team over at Vulcan Machine Works, so definitely stay tuned for all of that. Guys, if you have any other further questions, just leave them down below in the comment section. I do my best to answer all of you guys, and I appreciate everybody taking the time to engage with our content. Well guys, that's gonna wrap up this video. Again, huge shout out to the Springfield Armory marketing team and congratulations. A really big thank you to Stephanie and Chad with Springfield for always taking care of me. We are extremely grateful that we could be part of this launch as this is a gun that I have wanted for a very long time. A year ago, I had openly talked about this on social media, hoping that one day Springfield would make this gun. I was immediately hit with negativity and naysayers complaining about how this could never be done and at a reasonable price point. I hope that all of those people get a chance to shoot these guns and see how awesome they are out of the box. Thank you to everyone for watching this video. Um, if you like the video though, please give us a thumbs up down below because that does help out the channel. If you are new here, please consider subscribing because we post new videos every week. If you want to further support our content, please check out that Patreon link down below. Our Patreon members are a huge reason why we keep making these videos for you guys all to watch. Oh, and to all you negative Nancys out there, cheers. Thanks for watching and I see you guys in the next one. All right, guys, a little bonus footage for you. Jade actually had to work the weekend that we filmed this when Pam was visiting, so she has not shot the uh, Springfield Prodigy yet, but we got her out here filming something else, and we're gonna take a minute here. She's gonna shoot the uh, commander length four and a quarter inch with some 124s, go for it. All right. Um... It feels really good. 
Um, I'm kind of left speechless, to be honest with you. It's, it's nice. So you've shot XCs, you've shot Nighthawks, you've shot every staccato that I own. It's up there. You Not think? Why. Yeah, I think so. Like, um, I, How's the trigger for you? I've ever heard you talk about the trigger and it is a little bit different. Um, I think it is a little bit heavier and, but I mean, I'm fine with it. I don't think it's an issue for me, but, but honestly, no, it feels just really good. I think it's a comparable gun. Wow. Jade has spoken. 